Making SWC is just the most important thing. It's like the pinnacle of the game. Uh, making SWC this year would, it would really mean a lot. It's like the top of where you want to be, you know, in Smite, so it'd be awesome. Um, I don't really care about making SWC. I already did it last year, so you know, it's whatever. Making SWC would be like a monumental achievement. I mean, obviously every, everybody thinks they're going to make SWC, hopefully. Um, there's no way we'll ever win SWC. My team will probably make SWC because we've been putting in a lot of work to get there. Making the SWC just means that we have proven that we truly are a top team in the world. We're the best team in the world when we've had our prime. We're just really not that good. This year is my year. This year is my year. This year is my year. This year I'm getting fourth place. Welcome back to the SPL. It's Group D, day two, day one. Not exactly how we had it originally expected um pretty one-sided matches we did have a good match at the end though and if you guys enjoy watching smite you can also come and see the best play in the world remember head over to highresexpo.com to get your tickets now we have a sale running as well 25 percent off for the promo code group d again 25 percent off that's going to be ending tomorrow but we got some smite action today i'm joined by Tolly and firno on the desk enemies uh substitute yeah. player how you doing firno uh how's it going i'm Doing well. I'm excited to be here and uh, ready to watch some Smite. You're you're actually a very good player. You did play for them in the online stages. Thank Talk you. to me about the experience because that's really the the first time you've been in the SPL. Yeah, it was. Um, the SPL it's totally different from anything else. It's different from Challenger Cup. It's different from scrims. The competition is high and it's a lot of fun and I love it and I hope to keep doing it. Well, uh, maybe you'll be on stage next season here, but you're on the analyst desk for now. We all got to start somewhere. Don't worry. I guess so. Uh, let's take a look at uh, how day one ended up. At the top, Soar, really dominant performance there, sweeping both their opponents. They're on six points. Denial were able to take out Envy as well. And we had that really incredible set, uh, Denial versus Enemy. Why don't you talk to me a little bit about that set, Tolly? So we saw Enemy throughout the day. They struggled a lot against Soar, mm -hmm. but then in their second set against Denial, we definitely saw the improvements and the necessary adjustments that you guys had to make going throughout. And the first game to bounce back from a 53-minute game mm -hmm. loss, to bounce back from that... And then win the second game against now was very impressive. How, how confident are you guys feeling? Um, we're feeling a lot better than we did the first day. The first day, I think a lot of people, um, our practices haven't been like up to our expectations mm -hmm. and we were a little nervous the first day, I hate to admit it, but uh, we're going to bring it the second day and the third day as well. It's going to be a lot of fun and I hope people are excited to watch us. Oh, I'm, I'm excited to watch Enemy. Hopefully we have uh, some closer games today and we're starting off with Soar versus Denial. These are the two teams that I think really showed up yesterday. Um, obviously, you guys didn't stack up to your performance or expect your performance and Envy um, still struggling to find their first win. But Homi Yafe in the jungle has been absolutely incredible. Definitely someone that I think is in contention for that title of best jungler in North America. He's a very scary player and right next to him is also Anansur. They have very similar styles these two players. They both like the Al Kuang, they both like the Thor Nemesis. They like this early aggression. They try to apply the pressure onto the side lanes whenever they can. If they see any sort of weakness in that side lane, they're not afraid to commit to it. How do you guys deal with Homie Afe when you face up against him? Um, well, we know his god pool. We know the gods he likes to play. Mm -hmm. uh, he brought out the Neja yesterday. He's a great Neja player. Like you said, Al Kuang, Nemesis, Thor, like those are his main gods and we want to get him on something he's not comfortable with because with it he can carry like, and this, really hard. And this not uh, Naj or excuse me, not Naja, Nemesis Raijin combo really did a lot of work against Envy. I mean, is this something that teams are going to have to worry about? Because we saw that combo obviously when Raijin and Nemesis were in full power. I think you know end of spring and the start of fall, but both took nerfs. Are you guys still worried about that kind of deadly combination? Um, we aren't worried about anything because we know we can beat it because we're a great team and we'll stand up to anything. But uh, Denial in general, they love running that combo, and even after the nerfs, Raijin and Nemesis, they're still great gods in their category, and they're gonna wreck, <laughs> basically. Uh, but his opponent uh, has held the title of best player in the world. It's been quite some time, I'm talking season zero, season one, but Anninster, you can see, won the first Smite World Championship. Season two, they lost in a brutal match. I mean, it, it was basically, it was 3-2 against Energy. It was really close. It was, w losing to the champions of season two is not something that you should take too much to heart, honestly. They came really close. They got it to game number five. I think they had two games where they could have potentially won, 
on it, but either way, they had a great showing in Season 2, obviously winning Season 1 for Anderson. And right now, heading into this land specifically, he's been playing on fire yesterday. Well, we'll see if Anister can keep it up in the group of death. Andy has been around as long as Zap and as long as Vera. He's he's been through everything. He has a name for himself. He is a nuts player when he's when he's on, but he's a uh, he can definitely be off sometimes. I feel like sometimes on land he goes into land instar mode, which is when he goes a bit nervous and fails a couple of the either decisions or skill shots. I'm pretty sure not as great as he used to be though, but I think he got over the, like the landers, so it's kind of trade. He's not as good, but. At land, he won't be like, oh, shaky and having a seizure. So there's that. I think Anister is one of the uh, most intelligent junglers. He definitely plays the game differently than any other jungler. And whenever you know, whenever I play against him, I feel as though uh, I can I can distinguish him from any other player. Like if I had no idea I was in a game with him, I could tell it's Anister. He has really good shot calls. He also has amazing mechanics. So I just look up to Anister if I ever want to improve. I actually try to model a lot of my play off Anderster. When he used to stream a lot back then, I used to watch him. That was back when I played Challenger Cup. He makes plays that are kind of next level, like he knows what you're going to do and then plays around that. So he's really hard to play around. I definitely have like disagreements with him sometimes, but uh, you know, I respect him a lot. And uh, I've been teaming with him for like almost two years now. So I kind of threw that with a group of death, but definitely we didn't see a group of death in day one. And I think a lot of that was because Enister was the Grim Reaper. There was a little bit of talk about Kiki's like, oh, yeah, he's not as nervous on land anymore, but he's not playing to that same level he used to. We didn't see that in day one. Not at all. They're very focused. We were listening to their comms. If you're sitting in the esports arena, and sometimes when we did the Steel Series listen, and you could just hear the calm, collected composure, all of Soar are just so calm going into this land. And this is what's giving him the edge. We looked at all the teams heading into the group of death, but like Baskin tweeted, this is the group of the death bringer and Soar is going to be bringing it. That was pretty good, Tully. I got to give you the, the Death Bringer. Got the Smite reference, too, but we're into picks and bans here. We'll see if uh, that Grim Reaper title is going to hold true for Anister throughout day two. Denial, start off. They're going to ban away the Raw. We did see Soar really like that Erlong Shin Raw combo. Yeah, Raw has been very popular ever since uh, the first group, actually, when Sanguine brought it out. And I think people are realizing that Raw has been good this whole time. He hasn't been buffed, nerfed in a while. But he's just secretly been good. He's one of those those land monsters. Yeah, well, I know you guys even brought him out yesterday. Um, kind of what was the, the thought process around that? Just trying to adapt into this meta where Raw's really working? Well, we're half adapting into the meta and half because Chaos really loves Raw. It's one of his most played gods, I think, his most played god, oh, wow. actually. And uh, he's always comfortable on it, and we're not afraid to pick it. Okay, well, first pick is going to be Nemesis for Denial, going to go into the hands of Homie F.A. You know, you said you weren't too worried about dealing with it, but uh, should Soar be? Uh, I mean, Soar's the team to beat right now. I don't think they're worried about anything. I think they have a plan for it. It seems like they have a lot of options with the Nemesis being first pick for Denial. Thor is still available for Anister. That's probably something that he's going to be electing to do, but he doesn't have to pick it up right now. I don't think Denial would want to pick up Nemesis and Thor in the same team. Well, Bacchus is going to be immediately locked in, one of Jig's most prominent gods, and Agni going over to Snoopy. Snoopy has been known for more of these hunter types, but playing the raw yesterday was very successful. We'll see how he fares on the Agni. I'm not really used to seeing his Agni play for the most part, so it's going to be interesting to see how he's adapted to this kind of more old school mage traditional style. And Denial hovering on that Sobek. Obviously, Bacchus is Shadow Q's most prominent guy. I think he played it 12 out of 14 in the all nine stages. And now he's going to be playing this Sobek. And they do have that core combo of Nemesis, Sobek, and Raijin really deadly in the 3v3, Pierno. Yep, there it is. Sem uh, Nemesis, Raijin, Sobek. That's what they like to run. And Sora, I don't think I've seen Snoopy play Agni this season. In fact, he hasn't. Zero picks, zero wins. But um, I hope they've been practicing it because. I'd like to see it. He's only been playing Ra and ADCs. Talk, so talk to me about these uh, 3v3s, because they've both been locked in. Soar really seems like they're focusing on kind of that range poke with the Agni Thor versus that all-in style with the Sobek fl uh, fling into the, the Raja Nemesis alt combos. I think uh, Denial is a team that likes to fight a lot in mid, and that's why they chose the Sobek for initiations, the Nemesis Raja for that instant burst. And uh, I think they're ready. 
Well, Bands coming through in the second phase. Freya taken out by Sword. Don't want to have to deal with that on Vedium. They're also going to ban away a second Alquang. We'll get, get that fixed. Denial uh, actually taking out the Amaterasu, though. The Amaterasu has been so scary for Baskin. We've been seeing his Vamana and his Amaterasu. He gets to this late game form where he gets one little lead. All of a sudden, he's two levels ahead of his opposition. He starts proxy farming, and there's nothing you can really do. He's just so far ahead and so tanky at that point that you don't want to over-rotate just to try to kill him. Well, Soul's locked in, but I mean, these are really fast picks and bans. It seems like both of the teams have done their homework and came prepared with the strategy. Yes. Yes, I think they're both ready. I think uh, all of these teams are ready after the first day. We learned a lot from watching each other. Enemy especially, uh, you know, I go over the picks and bans with them and watch VODs with them, and uh, we're definitely ready for the second day. Every other team, we expect the same from them. Well, with Vamana Neath locked in, how do you feel about Denial's comp overall? Uh, I feel like this is a classic Denial comp. You know, I definitely see Homie on the Nemesis, uh, Benji on the Vamana, Vidium on the Neath. This is this is a classic denial comp. This is what they're comfortable with. Do you think so? Between uh, Soar and Denial, whose comp do you like more? Um, I think I want to lean a little more towards Denial's comp, but knowing Soar, you can never count them out. They could run whatever the heck they want. And, uh, <laughs> I have to agree. I think Snoopy's raw mid agrees too. Totally. Yep. Final thoughts on the draft. I like Source 3v3 a little bit better. You have safe initiations between the Agni and the Thor. Bacchus is there for that secondary follow-up. Denial has to be a little bit more close if they want to. So I got to give the edge to Soar. Well, I'm going to give the edge to Soar just because of how dominant they were in game one. But we have two casters that are here to bring you the game. Aggro and Hindu. Take it away. Thanks so much, Adonis, and the analysts as well. Obviously, Denial versus Saw, probably the most hyped match now after watching day one, and these are the two teams that showed up. I mean, a lot of talk on the analyst desk, and deservedly so, about this group of death, and the only one whose death is Saw. I mean, they're the ones running through everyone else, and Denial is the only team they've yet to face. We'll have to see how they're able to do. Denial looked really strong yesterday, and then the last game of the day, they go up against Enemy, and Enemy comes out of nowhere and looks like old Enemy again, and looks a lot better. So we'll have to see if Denial can match up to all I see in Saw's composition here, though, is fire and alcohol. And those two things mixed around this time of year is not necessarily a good thing for your opposition, but you do have a crocodile, is, and I think that crocodile's going to do a lot of work this game. Is there, a is there a time of year that alcohol and fire do go well together? Um, no. Yeah. Probably not, no, for the grand really, scheme of things. You really don't want to be Ooh, doing that a whole spicy lot. spicy start. Look at this group up on the left-hand side from Denial. Well, they're looking for the Sobek Invade. Obviously, they do have Shadow Q playing that, so they find an early pick on somebody looking for an early ward. They can really abuse that, but they're not going to find it. It might be a loop round towards mid here and try and catch someone trying to put a ward down, but already, so I've got those wards down already, so it's fall back and play safe. This is classic Denial. They group up as five, they look to kill you in the jungle, and then it's really annoying when they catch you because it's, you're like, oh, I, how did I not know? How did I not know that that was coming? In fact, we saw them get a first blood like this mm -hmm. just yesterday. So well, that time, Soar, a little bit more prepared. They understand the route that uh, Denial is going to take, and they are, are able to place their wards and back up. And those wards are important because you just want to make sure that there isn't anything funky going on. You want to know early if, you know, Penji and Homie Fei are doing the right mid camps instead of starting at speed, or they're going to be looking to invade. No one's going to be looking to invade Thor Robin, but you just want to make sure that they are that their buff timers are on the same time as yours. Yeah, that's true. We'll keep an eye on that one as well. We do see the Wrath start for Shadow Q on the Sobek as well here. It will help them on the late link play in the early stages, just getting there a little bit quicker because of the, obviously they're against the Agni and as well the Sol, who have a pretty good player at level one, which will help them out. And the most interesting thing as well is Vetium here starting with the Death Toll, not going for the Transcendence. Normally, we like to see the power build coming out there. Yesterday, he went on this Neath. He went this build and then built into Devourer's Gauntlets, had crit. I mean, it was like a standard ADC, which, like you mentioned, you really don't see a whole lot of on Neath. You see a lot of Transcendence, uh, sometimes even some Jotun's Wrath, those sorts of things. But Venium seems to like this traditional ADC style on this character. And when I think of Venium, this is the character I think of him on, is Neath. And so mm. if he's comfortable on it, then they're, it's going to work out where f well for Denial. And you saw him yesterday when he was up against the Jovalonke by Panda K. He did manage to find that solo kill when Panda went a little bit too aggressive. Well, this start, though, in the middle of the game, you could see that because that Wrath from Shadow Q, it allowed Hoi Win to get to lane even quicker there. And that allowed them to make sure they got the right on Harpies 
and the Fire Elementals, because poor old Snoopy at level one of Agni, you're not going to do a whole lot of clearing that wave if it's pushed in. This is the big Achilles heel of Agni. We talk about it all the time when he's in the game, is his early clear before level five is atrocious. You can see Snoopy going for the Soul Stone, just trying to buff that clear up just a little bit, getting that extra 60 power whenever he hits the five auto attacks. But even with that, it's not going to matter. He's going to get outpushed by a god like Raijin. And uh, going back to the Wrath selection from Shadow Q, very surprised we don't see a shell because you want to you want to get shell up against big AOE abilities. Yeah. And there's a lot of big AOE burst on the side of Soar. Agni Bombs, Met Yankee Stellar Burst and Supernova, Thor Dunk, Thor Spin. I mean, these are things that you always want to have shell up against. And you can see Jigs going for it. It's going to really help kind of negate that Raijin ultimate. Oh, Shadow Q missing that dash there. Could have spelled a bit of trouble there for Met Yankee. Won't get hit by the root either by Vetium. But with that Wrath going back even further, it will help him get to lane a little bit quicker. So he gets him a bit more dominance in these lanes in the early stages. Very important there. Everybody always talks about the early wave clear. But not only that, it is for the golf here in Fire Giant. It's an extra threat. Sobek, one of the best supports with it. Because of Lurker in the Waters, he can't be stopped from getting there, other than the walls from Aninster. Not only that, but just getting the buff invades going. We've seen a lot of red buff invades so far this weekend. And really, throughout the group split of the, of the teams that have the pressure in the duo lane, they'll be looking to invade on the opposite team's red buff. And you expect to have pressure with Neath Sobek. I mean, these are two gods that are really, really strong in the early laning phase. So I'm assuming that Denial is expecting to get lane pressure here and look to make a play on that red buff. Well, Bacchus gets pulled out of position, but Jigs just flops back to the safety of his teammates as well, clearing the wave on his way on top of that. We did tune in with the solo laners a little bit at the start here as well. Baskin versus Benji, for me, should be one of these classic matchups that could really be built up. The problem is, though, I don't think Benji's really all focused on it as much as we'd like him to be. I think him and Baskin could be the best two in North America if we saw Benji put the effort in here. But overall, I think we're just going to see a farm off here. They're both out of potions now, though, but we did see the first base coming out from Benji so far. Benji and Baskin, you're right, two of the most talented soul leaners in the world. Both, uh, you know, whenever you talk about other players, uh, whenever you talk to other players about them, they say, yeah, they're great, but they like to troll a lot. They mm -hmm. like to not take things as seriously. But whenever they're focused and whenever they're on their game, they're some of the best. We saw Benji have a great day yesterday. Baskin obviously kept Actually, on keeping that narrative going of him being the best player in the world. And we see the face it player comparison there. When I talked about that just and I didn't realize it was actually that close between the two. A couple of GPM difference, a little bit of a KDA difference. Damage output, well, I guess that's God dependent. Yeah, Baskin likes to go for these early, early dominant lane gods like Robin, like Erlong Shen. As well, he will take some gods like Amaterasu into the lane, but overall really likes to get these lane bullies going, and that where, that's where a lot of that damage is going to come from. Well, second set of Harpies are now spawning. Doesn't look like we're going to see a fight over these. It's going to be an even split. One for Denial and one for Saw as well, although Denial having a position advantage to swing around to the right-hand side here, and they may be looking for good old Baskin. Baskin has his ultimate available, but getting two people coming onto this right-hand side is going to force him to use it, but this is going to open up the blue buff invade. Baskin's in a lot of trouble over on this right-hand side right now. He's already dead for the first First blood, and that was picked up nicely with a great rotation coming out. But there's Anderson trying to turn it around. Benji forced to use his ultimate, and Baskin did use his as well. Yeah, I, I figured he'd be safe whenever he used that, but apparently he wasn't. Shadow Q rotating this right-hand side, they're okay with even if they don't get that kill because they can open up that blue buff invade with that Wrath. In the middle lane there, Herwin forced to use a purification, so Anansar is going to be looking at him whenever he comes back. That's a very good point there. A good little aggression from Snoopy forcing that. I don't think Herwin recognized the situation he was in. I think he would have held his purification there if he didn't realize there was no further support coming from the boys of Saw. So he's just going to drop the blue buff here, give it over to Baskin, and get Baskin back in this game but a bit early for Benji is very important. He did get the first blood as well, which accelerates his build a little bit more. Setting up 500 gold, already has Breastplate of Valor 2 right now, which is excellent place to be in at five minutes. I mean, he's always got 4,000 net worth in his pocket, and he's going to look to rotate and make the impact. We saw him ha do that, just that, up against Envy yesterday. He was the one really out-rotating Cyclone Spin, being the big impact in those team fights. And if he can get an early Frostbound Hammer, an early Runic Shield, something that shut down Met Yankee and Snoopy, or, or either by damage with the Frostbound Hammer or by defense with the Runic Shield, he can make a huge impact in these team fights. More surprised Denial got off to that first blood so easy and quick as well. When you look at their composition, you'd expect the fact that Thor on the other team would be the one to be looking for the initiations in the early game. The fact that ne Homie FA on the Nemesis managed to get that rotation off and pick off Baskin, who's, I guess he wasn't expecting a gank there. He was very pushed up. Not the typical time you see a solo lane gank, especially from the jungler and the support. Mm -hmm. I think that Shadow Q being there 
was definitely one of the surprise factors that led to Baskin giving up that first blood. And Homie Faye getting an early lead on this Nemesis is big. And he's coming back again. Baskin going to get ulted, but Baskin trying to hold off. But World Weaver coming through as well. So, yeah, he's going to look for the pressure with the ult, but he's going to get hit by the ultimate. Homie Faye not tanking Benji as Benji's one more hit. He'll get a second kill, but there is a rotation coming from Saw. And it's just going to crash down. Misses everything thus far. Looking for Homie Faye. Spin to win. Going to be just enough damage. Now Benji still has his ultimate. There he goes into the big baby. They're going to try and burn him down. They Intoxicate him. goes down. Anti-heal from the belch. Remember that. It comes into play. Aninster gets himself a double kill. However, what did Denial do? The best thing they can in the situation. They strip away the gold fury. There's putting that wrath to work. Denial's looking great right now. Moving Sora around the map, really dictating where Aninster has to be. Aninster has to come over and try and respond to that gank on the right-hand side. And Sadoku staying on the left was oh, perfect. Oh, Harry Ring getting called. That could be trouble. But luckily enough, Thunder Crash will get him out of that sticky situation with no purification available there. They'll get the right elementals here, Saw, but I don't think they'll be overall happy there. Like you said, Denala dictating the pace. They're pulling Saw to and fro, and they're already planning their next move before Saw have even planned to deal with the first one. That's true, but Saw's late game team comp is excellent here. I mean, you've got Agni for Snoopy, and you've got Soul for Met Yankee, and we've seen what Met can do on Soul if he doesn't get one shot by the cannon of MLC Stealth. He can really make an impact in these late game team fights, much more so than a character like Neath. Even with Vedium going for this later game traditional hunter build, I still Soul is definitely going to have more of an impact in those late game team fights. Hurwind is going to do well on this Raijin in the late game as well. He's going to be able to match up with that Agni. And Nemesis is going to do also have a strong late game. But overall, I still like the late game composition for Sora a little bit better than I like Denials. And we talk about Nemesis a little bit more here because he's camped to the solo lane a lot already, homie FA here. Is this good investment to look at Baskin early on when he's on this Raven? Whenever you've got a character or, or a guy like Benji who can really make an impact like a guy like Baskin, I like the decision. Putting Baskin down and putting Benji up is going to help your team fight in the mid game. If Benji can come in and make these big rotations, I mean, look at him. He's already level 11. He's got a two level lead in that solo lane, and he's sitting up almost a thousand gold at this point in the game. He's already got that breastplate of Valor finished, only mm -hmm. tier one available for Baskin right now. So I like the decision thus far, but as we get later into the game, once we start transitioning to 14, 15 minutes, I'd like to see him spend more time on this left-hand side, and he probably will. During the first 10 minutes of each game, right now, the meta for Smite is that the junglers are on the right-hand side predominantly because they want to pick up those gremlins or the fire elementals every time they respawn. So a lot of the focus is on this right side of the map. But once 10 minutes hits and the fire giant spawns, those gremlins go away, and that's when you start to see more focus on the left-hand side. So I assume that that's what we'll be seeing out of homie fight. Well, fire elementals spawning again the last one. One, but double tap will connect on Homie, who ults onto Andy to try and take him out. Andy goes to the sky, however, and Horrywind's popped his ult. There's a bit of trouble here as well. Thunder Crash will get him away from Aninster, but not for Shadow Q. Different story. Baskin with the kill. Benji with the rotation. Big baby form online. But he didn't really make an impact there at all. It was more Baskin on the rotation. That's what makes Baskin so good, is that even if he doesn't have the lead, he can come in and make a big impact there, picking up the kill onto Shadow Q. I love the poke onto Homie Faye. Um, he, he responds with the ultimate immediately, but because everyone from Denial is so far back, because that long range poke from Thor gets you is such, from such a safe distance, not, Denial really can't do anything. Herwin pops the ult, but not enough damage at this point in the game to really make an impact. And there's the shell that we talked about for Jigs, completely negating a large portion of that Raijin ultimate damage, which allows them to dive into that middle lane. And that was all over the fire elementals. That's how important these things have actually become now. They're not actually worth that much gold and experience, but it does add up during the early game, give you that small substantial lead that can come into play later on. It's one of those things where you're, you feel like you're doing well in lane, and then all of a sudden you, look, you press tab and it's, how is he, you know, a level How's and a half ahead, ahead and he's got, you know, 400 gold on me? Oh, I haven't gotten a single set of fire elementals yet this game. Definitely one of the things that can set up junglers and solo laners for a successful game. Well, we're about to discuss the fact that maybe we could see Benji start to go off with a Vamana now, but Baskin answered back nicely in that little engagement. I expected the next goal for you where we may see Benji shine with the extra experience he's got, but Baskin done a good job of catching up, has hit level 12 as well now, so we'll also have his second relic. Shout outs to the mid harpy there, saving uh, Aninster from having to use his ultimate. No purification online for him right now. Nah, Shadow so, Q wide it, that's what it was. Yeah, Shadow Q just wanted the minion. That was all he was after. That's the main main focus is, is those minions overall. Kill's not worth that much right about now. So it's about a thousand gold lead, give or take, in favor of Denial at the moment after that first goal fury. Experience though, completely even for the most part. 400, well it's 100 now, even that. As Shadow Perfect Q wall. caught in the jungle again. 
There's the ultimate coming out of Anitzer, forced to use a Sanctuary, but now Jigs caught in a bad spot. Herwin Ooh. using the Tycho drums, but Benji's able to pick Blue up Stone. Andy before he goes into the sky. He got into the sky, but the Blue Stone ticks came through. Benji picking that one up. Now Benji's trying to step up, but a good stun from Snoopy will slow him down. He'll be basking in the two solo lanes will trade a little bit more. And the lazy back from Jigs, well, that could have cost him a little bit more there, but he recognized the issue as, guess what? Denial are heading round to the Gold Fury. Spawning in 15 seconds is just a little bit too early for this. Shadow Q is coming back, though. Benji just popping the ultimate in the middle lane just to get some regeneration for this upcoming fight by the Gold Fury. He has meditation available as well, so his low mana pool, really not an issue for him right is now. Is this a wise idea for Denial to try and force this Gold Fury right now? Is it just spawns, or is it you just sit back and wait a little bit more? I like this call because Anister has no relics available, will get Purification up in the next five seconds, but won't have his ultimate to come mm. in and make a play on the Gold Fury. Plus, Wrath is up for Shadow Q. Yes, you do have Shell on the side of Jigs, which could make your engage a little bit sloppier, but, got but no I, I really like the idea to pull the Gold Fury I here. know, though, you got no ults at the same time here. I mean, every single one of your members not having an ult available, a little bit risky. It should be up basically in the next 10 to 15 seconds if, if my mental timer is okay right now, which it usually isn't. I, I'm the one making the calls. <laughs> oh, they've got no ults, let's fight. And then I get quadruple ulted, and I'm like, oh, man. Well, you were close enough. Homie FA's at least got his back up as Saw Gaming. Hold it on for the time being, it seems, against Denial here, Denial seem to be doing a good job so far. The the idea of them like leading the pack, so to speak, in this game has started off well for them, but sort of have started to answer back and find some of their own now. I like that. Leading the pack. They're the wolf pack. I, I didn't intend that at all. Stop it. That was solid. Stop it. Good job. But it's yeah, Denial early. looking good. I mean, they get a whole day to not go up against Soar. You didn't it was very clear that no one wanted to play Soar on day one. They came out looking very prepared, looking very strong. So Denial definitely has a little bit of an advantage being able to watch all what Soar was doing, go over the VODs last night and come in with a game plan so far today, and it's been looking good. Really do like the choice that Shadow Q here on the Sobek as well. Going for the Bulwark of Hope first. He realizes there's a lot of burst damage, as we said, a lot of magical damage too. It gives him that magical resistance. Plus that Bulwark of Hope will give him a little bit of a shield. You don't, clearly, because of your face you're pulling. No, it, it's a selfish item to build at this point in the game. It's a very expensive. Heartward Amulet would have given you a lot of magical protection, as well as given it to your team, so they wouldn't have been hurt as badly by the Agni Bombs, by Matt Yankee on this soul. I really would have preferred to see the Heartward Amulet there. But he is the one getting picked most of the time here. There's a lot of focus being put into him. He's the one that's going to walk in first of all. Maybe a little bit of selfishness will pay off. It could. It could. Here, Herwin going aggressive, looking at Snoopy, but he's going to be able to dash out. Jigs goes aggressive onto four Jigs members in a lot of, of Denial trouble there. there was no real support for him either. He was trying to buy time for his team to get out. Jigs falls. Andy in the sky, though. They may look at Hori win because Baskin was still giving chase, and that's exactly what they're going to do. Hori's asking for peeling help. The med comes through, but Snoopy's bombs reign supreme. Snoopy going to eat the World Weaver going to have to force the Sanctuary from Benji. Perfect pluck from Shadow Q, but Met drops the ultimate, trying to get the pick onto the Sobek. Baskin doing his best to be in the middle of four. They do find Shadow. Oh, this is not a good fight for Denial by the looks of it, unless Vettium can really step up and pick up Baskin here. Met Yankee going to zone him away. Meanwhile, Anis to take it on two. Double tap comes through, but a shield from Homie turns it around. Benji credited for the kill. Six to five, the favor of Denial. What an unbelievable back and forth fight. They split down the middle, basically, there. And now now Denial is going to be looking at the speed buff. Vedium was just able to do whatever he wanted in that fight. I mean, he's almost full health. He's got both relics available. So even if Sora were wanting to go aggressive on him on those mid camps, they wouldn't have been able to kill him with both those relics. I would say it was a lot of damage he put out, but he's got a lot of control with Anis. And that's one of the reasons I feel Denial like it, especially because Vedium, more of the farmer, wants to farm into the later game. Everyone's been discussing that for the most part. And that's why Neath fits the playstyle of Denial here. He's able to farm other people across the map with the World <laughs> yeah. Weaver, as well as farming his lane and as you can see, the build that I was talking about that he did yesterday, he's going into it again. Finish the Devourer's Gauntlets right now at 14 minutes, which is a good place to be at as a hunter building Devourer's Gauntlets. And now, now gone into the Ichabal, just trying to get some extra power and some extra attack speed into his build. Uh, we'll have to see what he's going to go next. I assume it's either going to be Executioner or Chin Size, uh, whatever he wants to go for here. Seen a couple of different things out of those from it gets to that sort of stage. Most of the time it is the Chins, but now and again, the Executioner does raise his head. As a whole, Group D was building a lot more Executioner mm. than I than I was expecting. And Group B for the NA for the other NA group, it was almost exclusively Chin Size. We didn't see like any Executioners basically, but so far yesterday, we saw a lot more Executioners than we did earlier. Well, they're trying to groups. catch him in the jungle here also, and they're going to get a good bomb stun and a bit more damage. Hurry, we knocked to half health there as well. That Red buff is available. I think they're giving it to Vettium this time round for those World Weavers to maybe make a bit more of an impact and to answer back some of what Met Yankee is dishing out with that red buff he's got himself. I really like the decision to give Vettium the red buff. He's level 16. He can really make a difference. But a lot of members of Denial had to back off that poke. Well, let's have a listen in to Saw here as they look to take this Gold Fury. 
No shield down. I'm up uh, a mana a little bit. I, mana. 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 I can't get to him. Uh, maybe don't 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 go, go, That's go, go, a lot of damage on Nice, nice. a lot of damage on homie. Yeah, I don't think we can do gold though. They can't do gold either. Yeah. I mean, they can with Hog. We we still need like around. Can I get those big smith so I can heal? It's like really important that I heal up. Oh shh. That's all good. My one was. It's all good. We need to get a sentry. Uh, they could go to. I'm watching it. I'm watching it. We'll see them get to gold. That's the thing. Like we can see them go to gold. We won't see them on it, but we can see them go there. Let's throw up. I need a back right now. Can you guys cover gold? I got it. Yeah. Yeah. They're not on it right now. I kind of need to back ASAP as well. They're on speed right now. They're on speed. Okay. Gonna clear another way. Shipment up back. Yeah. Well, thanks to Cell Service for that listen. And we did hear Saul Luck could do it, but they weren't comfortable in the situation. They said they don't think Denial could do it, but they did recognize the Wrath, which was very important that they didn't all disappear at the same time. Very calm communication coming out of Sor, even if they aren't dominating like they did yesterday. In fact, they're sitting down a significant chunk of gold right now. I mean, 3,700 3, is a lot of gold to be down mm. at 16 minutes, especially after the types of perform performances you had yesterday. But Sora do not seem phased. I mean, that for the most part seemed to be that last fight that we saw over on the right hand side there because it went even for denial and saw the difference was denial were in a better position to steal away some buffs in the jungle put pressure there and now they're going to pull the gold fury benji level 18 is totally fine tanking this up he's not he's not worried about that damage whatsoever soar knows this, this is, is happening bait. this seems a bait for shadow kid to look for a plucker he's going to find one on yankee who looks like he purified that one away the bomb from snoopy off the mark jigs takes a lot of free poke out of nowhere and he's already at half health but meanwhile benji goes in a little bit too deep forced to use the big babe and he's looking at jigs curses on him however so there's not so much sustain for the big baby. He's going to fall back. Meanwhile, mid lane, a lot of pressure from homie onto Snoopy, but Andy's on his way. Perfect ultimate from Hurrowin. Get a pick up. Snoopy and Insert just trying to answer back. But by hammering in, he's in a bad spot. Force to use the purification. The rest of Denial just coming together in the middle lane. I love their team fight right oh, now. Oh, Vetium cut off from his team, but the wall wasn't perfectly angled, so he did have an escape route, luckily enough. A little bit weak here with the boys in Denial, but they can sustain up a little bit more here. You can see Out of Mana is basking, but he's got teleport available, so we'll be able to come back to this fight if they now look at the gold fury and it's there no ultimate available and wrath is up for shadow q so it definitely could be a gold fury pool here for denial meditation popped by benji just to top everyone off these walls just trying to slow them down to honest this dude but benji's going straight in on met yankee here trying to take him completely out of the fight did force to disapparate and instead is around the left hand harpies here but he's up against the wrath and even homie recognizes it anyway gonna zone him away gold fury the way of denial for free but a big stun from and doesn't want to give it up Fine yet time. baskin is back he's gonna alt in jigs Following him in, Hurwin being forced to Sanctuary in the mid lane. Mayanki still under a lot of pressure, not a whole lot of mana available to him, and Denial's going to be able to disengage. Didn't seem that Mayanki wanted to choose a target there. He was trying to think of one, but at the same time, he had Benji flanking behind him again. He was a little bit worried about the Vamana coming in there, and that Vamana still has Teleport available with the Tier 1 tower down being in right. Benji's kind of ran away with this lane after that first kill that he got from Homie FA. No doubt about it. He's level 19 right now, sitting up over 10,000 net worth. I mean, that is insane. Five Five, one and one, top of the player damage charts in the entire game. The plan from Homie Fay, get Benji ahead, has worked to perfection. And Baskin, he's made some sort of impact in this game, but he is still down quite considerably. Like you see, it's over a thousand, it was like about 1800 gold lead actually in favor of Benji here, who's approaching level 20 at a very quick pace. And most importantly, Baskin's a level down from Vetium, and it's very difficult to make life hell for an enemy hunter whenever they've got the level advantage over you. You're supposed to be the one who's up two to three levels sometimes and able to sit in their face and not really worried about the damage. But when they're level up on you, you do have to respect their damage. Well, it's not all doom and gloom for Saw just yet. We said the late game composition pretty strong as well. Obviously, it is double magical as well. So they'll have to keep an eye on that one as time goes on. Just make sure there's not too much magical resistance coming out from the side of Denial. And that means the pressure is more on to Andinster and Baskin to make sure they do deal out some physical. Andy's done a good job so far, though. Andy's had a pre pretty good game overall. Had a couple of missed skills on the right-hand side earlier, but for the most part, has looked fairly sharp. Three, two, and two, top of his team in player damage. Met Yankee's in a really good spot to carry this game, though. Sitting 0-0-2, zero, zero, and two, only a level down from Vetium. He's got his fourth item online now, and if Sora's able to win a team fight just slightly, the push potential coming out of Met Yankee could really turn the gold lead back towards Sora's favor. Very, very true indeed. Denial in a very good spot. Looks like they've prepped very hard for this set against Sora as well. They look like they had game plans in mind and they've executed them very well so far, especially with the two gold viewers going their way as well. Tier 1 tower on the right already being down. They have overall dominance in this game so far. And we haven't even talked about a big storyline coming into this weekend. That's Heroin's Revenge. Heroin going up against the team that kicked him 
after DreamHack Masters, you know, he was the one who was very forthcoming about saying, yeah, I want to prove that I can play well on LAN, and this is the team I want to do it against. Sitting at 1-1-3, one, one, and three, he's on it thus far. Well, he did do a lazy back and ate a double tap for his pleasure there, and it's to showing him, don't be that cheeky, sunshine. You might be in the lead right now, but it's not all in your favor just yet. And yeah, you know, Hori Wind and Homie FA left this squad. One forced out, the other one went to join him in Homie FA. They wanted to keep the synergy of the jungler and mid laner intact, and it's working out well for Denial. So meanwhile, did recruit and and Snoopy to the squad. Both teams got better from these roster changes. That's what I would say. Benji makes the rotation, just putting a little bit of pressure onto Snoopy, but recognizing that Snoopy's had a tough game, but not a bad game. I mean, it's been Benji. When the enemy soul laner is this big early on in the game, your life as a mage is so difficult to be able to be where you want to be and do the damage you need to do for your team to win. But the problem with Vamana that we see oftentimes in the later game is he, he's big right now, he's level 20, he can go into Big Baby and he's unkillable. And then like six or seven minutes from now, he's gonna go into Big Baby and then just get shredded. I mean, Big Baby in the late game is really just used as a CC immunity, wait until my cooldowns are up and then immediately cancel it sort of tool. You can't stick on anyone well enough anymore. You don't do enough damage, you aren't as unkillable. So if Snoopy can continue to farm up, get towards level 20, he needs some more penetration online. That helm is not giving him enough penetration Well, you mentioned right now. the farm up situation for Saw here, and that's exactly what they can do at this stage of the game. There's no real threat of a Gold Fury being taken right now. The Fire Giant's just too much of a beast to take down at this stage. There's not enough of a lead, I want to say, in Denial's favor for them to actually try and force that just yet. So at the moment, they just get to farm up, and as long as they don't get picked, or they can finally pick themselves, they're going to snowball that back to an even state of game, quite possibly. And Sword's got a great composition for getting poke damage off. I mean, Thor, Agni, Bacchus even, really, really good at delivering long-ranged poke, just like that. But Anister has to be careful, has to use the ultimate because he was he used the hammer there. And that's all it's about, not getting picked off is the big point, but it does give the right and hard He's that way of denial now, based off Saw having to use that. And Anistar, now on the back foot with no ultimate, has to watch himself again. Does have Sanctuary and Purification, though, so he won't be too scared of going in again, knowing that he can still get out. And because of this, Denial is going to look to group up in the middle lane. Vedium had started to make the rotation, but then the call must have come through that let's just keep farming, we'll keep farming. Let's get Benji his sixth item. Homie Faye almost completed his fifth. This team is in a really good spot as far as items go. And once you see Benji complete that sixth, Homie Faye complete the fifth, those power spikes come online. Heroin gets some more penetration, most likely going in into Obsidian Shard there. That's when you're going to see Denial start to push up. I'd say where they're going to push up is when this Gold Fury spawns. And you can see it is already landing right now. Back available on the map. Two already the way of Denial. The third one, definitely a telltale sign of where this state of this game could really go now. Denial could start to pick up pace and run away with it here as well, Agro, because of that. Exactly. That, and that's that's what they've been playing for is the second or this next gold fury spawn they've already got two under their belt a third one like you mentioned would really propel them up into a really commanding spot in this game. Well, it looks like there is a potential fight for both these two teams. Benji is split pushing the right-hand side, though, with Teleport. But round the back comes Andy again, and a very good double tap put. Hori went in a bit of an awkward position there. Homie FA trying to return the damage to Anderson now, but he's isolated and alone. He's Hori went popped his ultimate, but he's too far away to influence that. And now Andy goes to the sky. He's going to be looking for Hurrowind, I think, but he is pretty deep by himself, and he's just looking for a target to come down on instead. Decides to disengage. Both junglers there being a little bit too trigger-happy with their Ultimates. Homie goes in hard onto Anninster in the middle of three sore members. Decides he has to disengage. Heroin wastes his ult as well. Mm -hmm. So Denial's forced to back And Heroin's ult there was a defensive usage more than anything to help out a little bit onto Homie FA, but the sprint from Jigs helped his team get away from the damage output. So Heroin's ultimate may look really weird, but he was in range at first until the sprint kicked in. But this is the sort of thing that we saw from Heroin both yesterday against Enemy in game two, whenever they started to get some pressure put on them, and a dream hack is that he's a little bit too quick on mm -hmm. those ultimates. He doesn't to wait for the setup necessary to make sure that he's hitting them. So his, that could be a sign that he's starting to feel a little bit of pressure in this game. Well, we've not spoken about it just yet, but look at the relic usage of that last little skirmish we saw. A lot was invested there by Denial, to be fair. The teleport down on Benji, as well as both relics down on Homie FA and one from Hurrywind. That's going to make a major impact around the Gold Fury fights. Although, when you look at Jigs, he did use both his defensive relics there as well. So it may be a sign that Soul might just want to hold off as well here. If they can get a pick on Homie FA, that would put... So we're in a perfect position to come back into this game. Both relics being down, like you mentioned, 
for the next minute plus puts Soar in a really, really great spot to find a pick onto the jungler. I don't think they realize it. That's the thing here. I don't think they may be able to capitalize on it at the moment. I think they're a little bit worried about his ultimate still. I mean, he's level 19, so it's almost maxed out. It's almost going to be taking away, you know, a ton of your protections and health. So they're worried about that ultimate cooldown, as well as the fact that they're not sure that they have the burst damage. I mean, looking at the levels, only level 17 on Snoopy just now completing the Obsidian Shard. Uh, Rod of Tahuti is completed for Met Yankee, though, so it's going to be Soar really trying to play around their Hunter this game. Well, you did see over there the Benji rotate back to the solo lane where Homie FA was farming, but Soar recognized it, but they weren't really in a position to start the Gold Fury up because they would have seen it a little bit early. They may have tried to rush this down, knowing that Teleport is on cooldown for Benji as well. They have a man advantage. Instead, they're pressuring left-hand side here, trying to catch Vertium, who is in this left-hand side, or just trying to catch a rotation out of the boys of Denial. But look at the ward coverage for Denial right now. They know where everyone is on Soar at all times. Anansar goes a little bit aggressive on to oh, Snoopy Benningham. got plucked though, and that's an awkward position for Snoopy, who also got knocked up for the purification. Hurrywind's ult a little bit too late to help out. Andy in the sky now. He may look at Hurrywind. Thundercrash comes through, however, to get him away from the danger. Homie FA cut off by the wall, looking for a space to get through. Baskin denies it with the body block stop, allowing Met Yagi and the Stellar Burst to come up big. But Jig's very low, and Vettium gonna clean that one up in response. Next on the list is Met Yankee. Benji just trying to chase him down there so low. Benji in that big baby, just not quite enough. Anansar on the side, just throwing out the damage. Baskin is going back in. in. And now he's looking for Vettium as well. Vettium's in a world of hurt. Andy picks it up with the Berserker Barrage. And next up is Shadow Q, stunned in place by Snoopy with a lovely little 2-1 combo there coming out from him. But it's not going to be enough for Soul Gaming to be able to take the Gold Fury. So low. Met Yankee and Snoopy just peeling for each other. I mentioned it earlier. In the later game, when Baskin go or when Benji goes in up, up into that Colossal Fury, he just won't be able to catch you, and he's going to take too much damage. We saw it there, not able to catch up to Met Yankee, and a perfect pick on to uh, Homie Pay there. Well, Benji teleports back in to make sure they're not doing Gold Fury. He takes a lot of free poke already as Hurrywind Thunder crashes away. Gold Fury pulled for a second here, but it's too little now. Denial have reinforcements back here, only Vettium dead for the next 18 seconds. I don't know if Soar knows that Shadow Q's Wrath is down, but just him being there, if they aren't sure, you can't pull the Gold Fury. You cannot give that up. Well, you say, not even if the Wrath, I mean, you've got over abilities in the game too. You need the drum, the ultimate coming out from Hurrywind. You've also got Lickin' of the Waters does a hell of a lot of damage that you can't really stop coming through. Very true. So Denial just showing their face is going to prevent Soar from doing the Gold Fury right now. If we take a look at the graph, Soar just start, starting to get back into it a little bit. We see a slight dip overall, but it's still a 5,000 plus gold lead for Denial. And if you're on Denial's side, you say, okay, we didn't win that team fight, but it's fine. It's not a big deal. We didn't lose anything at all. Don't worry about it. We'll get him in the next one. And what a great position to be in as Denial. Watching Enemy and Envy flounder yesterday for the most part. And then coming up against Saw, who everyone is now touting is the best team in this group by far, even in North America. And going toe-to-toe -to -toe with him. Gold Fury pulled by Denial this time. Shadow Q not going to find that plug. Very big miss that. And he's going to get punished quite heavily for it. Has to use lurking in the waters right away. Look at the damage from Met Yankee's autos. He's Jeez, still Matt. chasing him oh, down. Matt he just Yankee. sold him with the stellar burst. No support coming out from him as well. He couldn't get any close. Closer. Now one member down on the side of Denial means they can all focus on Tahomi FA. Flop not going to connect, but the Intoxicate will. The Drunken Man comes up big. Drums of War from Hurrywind deal some damage to Soul, but they're not going to be deterred from the Tier 1 Tower. Anansar going up into the sky. He's not done yet. Looking for the rest of Denial. Crashes down onto Vettium. No purification available. Going to be able to finish him off. Hurrywind does his best to help out his Hunter, but it's not enough. It's only Benji trying to are trying to defend this middle lane up against five members of Not Sword. Not spoke about him yet, but Met Yankee turned that around pretty much on his own there. Connected with all those in hands onto Shadow Q. Has once saw that fight. Now they're looking for more. Benji under pressure here. Gonna get away from the stun from Snoopy, but his towers will not. A tier two and a tier one of one single small mistake from Denial. Unbelievable play from Met Yankee. The unsung hero, really, of Sword. You hear it so much talk about Snoopy, Jigs, Anister, Baskin, and then it's like, oh yeah, Met's there too. Well, Mets, Mets here, man, and he's the one making the difference for Soar. And those interviews that we've done about them, hold up, this could be a small idea from Soar that's not the wisest because Denial have respawned here for the most part. They're around the golf here. They're not feeling like going for it, though, surprisingly enough. Obviously, it was only two members there, Vettium not around as well, so they're not going to have to do it themselves. Exactly, that's the big thing. Vettium still on the respawn timer, still not able to come over and help tank up that gold fury. And with Met Yankee there, 
you don't want to do anything with Met Yankee there right now. Two, zero, and three. Second on the damage charts right now. And Annenster sitting on top. He's had a great game thus far. Only those two deaths that he got earlier on. And he's really done a great job of poking out the opposition to get them low and then ulting in and finding the kills and setting up for his team. I will say instrumental to this. But let's have a listen into Denial's comms as he looks to defend this goal fury. It's like 60. Oh, I have to go in really soon. Yeah, where's Thor? Let's throw there. Thor's mid. Thor's mid. Okay, there, uh, there, 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 there. Can we force something? Yeah, we probably can. We need to go. Oh, I don't have access. Okay, look, look, push out. Push out. Push out. Shannon, push out. Good box. Good box. Good box. Good box. Good box. They're low. They're low. Thor's running. Thor's running. Thor's running. I need us. Look at Thor. 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 Please. I'm under Vana. I'm under Vana. Oh my god. We killed Thor. I'm not ready for anything. I guess I'll look for them. Maybe. I need to heal off something. I am pretty low. Okay. Yeah, Sentry. Well, you heard Denal's comms in that in the Steel Series listening, but it was all sore for me again. Annenste gets out of danger, but also picks up a double kill during traffic. Holy. What the heck just <laughs> happened to homie fame, man? Met Yankee and Anister. I mean, you assume that Andy's just trying to get out with that hammer, but really, he was just killing the enemy jungler. That was unbelievable between those two, and those two have been the story thus far. It's been, it's been Anister and mm -hmm. Met Yankee really putting Sore in position to win this game. And homie Effie in the early game was instrumental in getting Denal to this point, but now Denal has started to lose the edge. Sore, they're combining their crowd control effects very, very well, juggling it, helping each other out, but not over committing as well for the most part like they did in the early game that cost them a couple of times. But if you're Denial right now, you're still in a perfectly fine spot. You're sitting at 32 minutes in. But you're the even. game is completely even. Yes, you don't have the lead you did before, but you're all level 20, basically. Let's just take it slow, take these team fights. You know you can win them because you've been close That's to winning true. them. It's just been a couple big plays from guys like Met Yankee and like Annenster. And Annenster, with these walls and double taps, you brought it up before we did the listening. Yeah, he's landing a lot of them over and over again, being a disruptor more than anything. And then when his team commit, he sits back, waits for the perfect ultimate to clean up crew. Benji did get stunned there from the dash. Andy going to try and poke him a little bit more, but Benji realizing he was alone went, okay, I'll take a fight with you, but Baskin shows up to slow that idea down. Baskin, or Benji rather, does have teleport, does have meditation, so he's not really worried about all this poke. Met Yankee going to pull onto this gold fury. They're going to be able to shred this fairly quickly, but the rest of Denial does know this is happening. Well, Homie F.A. going to get zoned up by Baskin for now, but Benji, as you said, had teleport. Going to come in as well. Ultimate used by Homie F.A. Drums of War coming out as well from Hurry Wind. Get some decent damage off to the carries on the back line, but Andis is going to return the favor a little bit onto Vetium. Bombs raining down from Snoopy, looking for a bit of pressure, only really hitting Shadow Q, but Benji's giving chase from a World Weaver on its way. Benji needs to be careful here. So much damage the coming peel. out of Met Yankee, but they're doing Doing okay. Benji now gonna get out. Homie Faye completely healthy. Anister forced out as well. Great ultimate there from Hurrowind. Really poked out Met and Baskin. Allowed Benji to push forward. Well, the Gold Fury pulled by Denial. They have Wrath available as well. And Denial will get the third Gold Fury of the game. They have the lead back. Baskin cannot stop that from happening. So did a good job of peeling there, Agro. But they didn't deal out a lot of damage in that fight because they were so focused on staying alive. And they were so poked out. I mean, like I mentioned, Hurrowind's Drums of War there were perfect, just keeping Met Yankee low. He didn't use any relics, or he did use a Sanctuary in that fight, so he wasn't able to immune that damage long range coming out of Hurrowind, and he's really turned it around. I mean, he didn't have the greatest early game. It was really Benji and Homie Fei working together to get this lead for Denial, but now that we're into the late game stages, now that you need your big damage mage to come up with yeah. the big damage, Hurrowind's doing his job. Second on the damage charts right now, and that fight could be largely attributed to him. Yeah, for the most part, with just that ultimate coming through, hitting the backline carries, However, so knowing the wrath is down here, they're committing for a fire jet. No, the wrath is not down. I tell a lie, they held the wrath here. I don't think they know Shadow Q has it. This is a bait from Saw for a fight. Benji's cut Whoa. off, but Benji's regenerating nicely. Shadow Q doing a good job of keeping him busy on the back. But meanwhile, Vetium under pressure from Baskin. Vetium, no relics. He's got to be careful, but Anister misses. There's the ultimate from Homie Faye. Vetium still running for his life from Baskin. Met Yankees joined Baskin as well. Anister kind of caught in the blue buff. It looks like Denial is going to be able to dip disengage here and that's a big win for them because when your hunter doesn't have any relics they are very vulnerable in these late game team fights Annenster with a rare miss on that ultimate that could have turned the game in, in Sora's favor without a doubt but instead it misses it Vedium gets out and Denial is able to reset now was this a play from Sora there to look for a fight again it looked like it was more than a fire giant call I guess they did pull it to a decent amount of health down but mm -hmm. it looked more like they wanted to take an engagement without a doubt knowing both those relics were down for Vedium is the reason they're looking to pick that fight and even though they don't find him, 
Look at the relics they got out of Homie Faye and Heroin. Mm. Both sets from both characters. So that's four really, really important def defensive relics down now for Denial. We'll give credit there to Shadow Cube. That sprint that came through did save Vetium's life more rather than not because he wouldn't have managed to get away from Baskin and Anster giving chase of otherwise. But Saw feeling themselves now, knowing about those relics, they're pulling the Fire Giant again. And we'll see if they can force this one. Supernova early there by Met Yankee. Not the greatest in the grand scheme of things. That's on cooldown as Shadow Cube does pull Baskin. Not really a target. He's after, but Snoopy takes a lot of free poke and Snoopy He's already dead. Heroin, big plays coming out of him. Baskin forced to retreat very, very low. Anister's going to come crashing Try down, busy. but immediately gets Thunder Crash on top of Vettium. Looks like he wants to chase. Met Yankee just throwing autos, trying to save his own life via damage. Dealing as much as he can, but Homie's on him as is Benji. Homie credit for the kill. Jigs his support, trying to help him out, but he can't do much more. Meanwhile, Anister was trying to keep the boys of Saw busy. He's keeping Hori, sorry, keeping Denial busy. He's keeping Horiwin busy for the most part, but he's been chased down the whole time. Unbelievable. Unbelievable play there from Hurwind, picking off Snoopy. That Sanctuary must have been down. It's up now, but he just kind of stood there and took that damage from a distance. Denial secures the first Fire Giant of the game at 36 minutes off the Baskin. back of a great ult from Hurwind. But they're not going to find Baskin there. You did see Anderson did manage to get out of dodge in the enemy side of the map, but the Fire Giant going the way of Denial, very, very important for them here. This is a lot of global gold available to them here, Agro, as well. All these towers available. The Tier 1s, they give you whole team 500. The Tier 2s give you all 15. Yeah. They've got a ton of gold on the map, and that's a great point. They're going to be able to finish off all of their builds, I'm sure, as well as purchase some power potions, which is going to help you with that final push down the down to the Phoenixes. This but it looks wise. like they're leaving the Phoenix, the, the towers up. Benji going to go in straight away. Burst it down already. It's at this deletion. Vatium gets credit for the kill. Jix next on the last. Two kills the way of Vatium. Phoenix falls as well. Are they going for the end? I, I, they are. The, I, they're they're thinking about they, it. They, don't, they can't decide. The call was not there. You can saw people back in trying to change their mind. They could have <laughs> taken the towers. They will take a couple more, I think, with two members being dead there. But that indecision could have cost them at least one. Two separate pings there as well. Half the team's pinging right tower. Yeah. Half the pings, team's pinging left tower. That's nosebleed situation now. You, you're ahead against Saw. You're in a great dominant position. You can't choose what to do. You saw two members. The carries actually went to the left and tier one, tier two tower. The other two went to the tier one, two on the right which meant that they delayed time a little bit more. They will be able to get this Phoenix, but I think they could have got a lot more out of this. The right tower was definitely the right call because it exposed this Phoenix much faster than that left Phoenix. Herwin actually going up, looking to make the plays, Just not going to be able out. to find it, but it's okay because they're going to be backing up here and they're not going to need that, need that ultimate until they're pushing down that left-hand Phoenix. They're not worried about wasting that cooldown from Heroin. Well, you saw the respawn timers of Aninster there and Jigs who got picked up in that last engagement. It's over 45 seconds right now. It's going to continue to mount. And if Saw can come up with one team fight at the left-hand Phoenix, more than likely, then things could turn around on a knife edge very, very quickly. Without a doubt, uh, Heroin making such an impact here in the in the late game. Homie Faye ulting Baskin consistently, just stripping away those protections, giving him that tankiness that he needs. and. Denial as a whole has done a much better job of making sure Met Yankee is not able to free cast in these late game team fights. It's been Benji's job to be in Met Yankee's face. Well, consistently. the invasion is on. They're looking for Vettium on the backside here. A little rotation from Saw. They catch Denial unaware. Andy in the sky now looking to come down on one. But who will the target be? Maybe Homie who's isolated from his team. Andy goes to teamwork and making sure they peel for him. Homie is still alive though. The Sanctuary just used the shield. Got absorbed by the wall, however. And Met Yankee Supernova cleans him up. Benji answers back with Vormans. Vettium does clean up Met Yankee in the backside. Jigs will pick up Hurry Win though, as Jigs did a very good job there with Baskin of making sure at least one of the carries of Denial die. Heroin went really aggressive to secure that kill on a Snoopy, was able to pick it up, but falls in return. Overall, it's a two for two, which favors Soar. I mean, sure. they're going to be able to def it's going to be tough for Denial to siege down this left-hand Phoenix. Yes, it's going to be tough for Sora to defend against these fire waves, especially with the three characters that are up, Thor, Robin, and Bacchus. So this opens up Denial to push down these tier two tower, this tier one and tier two tower very easily, but it's going to be difficult for them to push onto that Phoenix by the time those characters respawn. So question, do you want tier one, tier two tower here, or do you want tier one gold fury here? Tier one, tier two. You want to expose the Phoenix for the next Fire Giant spot. Fire Giant is only on you for another 35 seconds. You want to make sure that it's easy for you to get that Phoenix as soon as the next Fire well, Giant. They pops. may even get the Gold Fury as well if they're lucky enough there, because it doesn't look like Saw coming over this side to defend. They know, like you said, they're not going to be able to go for the Phoenix just yet with two members being dead. 
And they're not going to go for the Gulf here, though. Going to fall back to base here. No one even needs items on the side of Denial. It's only Shadow Q that's waiting to complete his sixth item, looking for a Spirit's Robe or a Mantle of Discord there. So he, no one needs that gold from the gold here. Yes, it'll help you with potions, but you can see an Elixir of Power on Benji, an Elixir of Defense on Homie Fei. Not worth denying it, though, from Sword, just in case it gives him a window back in. If Sword's going to waste their time on the left side of the map doing Gold Fury, that opens up the Fire, the fire giant, giant for you. It opens up pushing down these Fire fire Waves. Sword's not going to be looking at the Gold Fury right now. They need to defend their Titan from these Fire Minions, as well as defend the Fire Giant from Denial. Well, there's no Wrath on the side of Sword Gaming at all. Obviously, we've only, only mentioned the one that's on the side of Shadow Q. The Fire Giant going to be spawning in 40 seconds' time, so Denial going to place the wards down the right-hand side. They're in a very comfortable position here. Bad news is the Fire Giant, I feel, is going to spawn at the same time as these Phoenixes do come back up. So Sword should have a relatively fair fight for the most part here. Anansir being able to disrupt it with his Anvil of Dawn should buy Soar enough time to defend their Phoenixes, like you mentioned, and get there in time. Remember, once the Phoenixes respawn, that's not the last fire wave you're going to see. You're going to see a couple more. Shadow Q missing the plug, puts him into pressure, forced to use the ultimate, but the ultimate hits Jinx as well. Jinx is in trouble, and the drums of war from Horiwin oh take out two. Snoopy got hit. And it's no going for Homie Afri on the back, but Horiwin going to deny Andy a free farming opportunity onto the Assassin. Basket, meanwhile, making sure Vetium does not have a great day. The Sanctuary forced onto him, but the peel from Denial is just too good. Wow, unbelievable play from Hurwin. Now Homie Faye in a little bit of trouble, forced to Sanctuary. Anister just running away from Shadow Q now, but the Titan is exposed. Hurwin picks up Matt Yankee, That's game. tells him what he thinks what he thinks of him, and Anister the only one left alive for Soar. Anister going to try and buy himself time. Shadow Q just going to work on zoning him more than anything else. Homie really wants to kill Henny. He'll get it now after the Berserker Barrage eats the shield. And the Phoenix down in mid lane, the Phoenix is down in the right-hand lane, but guess who's here? It's Denial! Denial! are gonna beat Soar in game one. Soar looked unbeatable yesterday and Denial comes in with a game plan, executes it well. Let's let Benji destroy in the early game and trust our mid laner on land, Hurrowind. Let's trust him to make the big plays in the late game and he did exactly that, deleting both Jigs and Snoopy in the last team you, fight. you mentioned the start of the game. Saw got off to a fantastic, sorry, saw, Denial got off to a fantastic start there with Homie FA, helping out his boy. But the problem was is that as the game developed, Saw did come online for stages of that. They evened the game up from a big deficit at one point or another and then Denial came back again. I'm kind of looking at the Wrath. I think the Wrath actually did make an impact. It definitely did, but for me, it was just the difference of the two mid laners. Snoopy was never able to be in the fights long enough to deal the damage necessary, whereas you saw Hurrowind again and again just coming up big with those ultimates, positioning very, very well, using his relics defensively, and making that big difference in the late game team fights. Honestly, when we saw Denali as enemy yesterday, I did not expect it to be that sort of game. I thought it would go one way or the other, either clean stomps or not, but after the performance against enemy, Denali didn't look amazing, but I still had them looking at number two right now. However, beating Saw, this is, could be a two-horse race for first. It really could. I mean, the group of death uh, not living up to expectations thus far. It's but day two, though. It was all, it, exactly. That was only the first game of day two. I expect that both Enemy and Envy will look a lot better today, as well as Denial's looking a lot better today. The only team that's not living up to their day one performance thus far is Soar. Well, it's going to be a long day, boys and girls. That's only game one. The analysts are ready. Take it away, boys. What an intense game. That one was... Uh really close. Just oh, yeah. give me your first thoughts on that, Tolly. Camp Baskin. That was the strategy that Denial pulled out right off the bat. They uh, made sure that he wouldn't get off to a good start as the Robin. And we really saw Benji able to abuse that lead he got. Yeah, for sure. I think that was Denial's plan. Is, uh, in day one, you saw Sor destroying everybody, and it was off of Baskin, off of his leadership, his comms, and him just destroying. And they wanted to put him behind, and it looked like Sor was uh, a little lost at times with a uh, Benji being so far ahead and Baskin surprisingly being behind. Yeah, and this was just a crazy gank, right? You you know, Neath has kind of fallen out of the meta, but we know how powerful she can be. Also, Shadow Q kind of just there at minute four, and then not even two minutes later, the second gank comes through. Kind of pulling a strategy out of Aurora's book, just camping the soul lane very early on, which is a good idea because as of a mana player, you want to get that little bit of a lead and transition and carry into the mid to late game, which Benji was doing a great job with. I mean, we saw him a thousand gold ahead, I think, you know, eight to ten minutes. It was pretty extreme and he was really able to snowball that we saw him you know really focusing on anister in those fights here now yeah i see uh denial had a lead and sore they were still in it of course they're sore uh i heard baskin saying while well, they were five or six k down we're basically even we're still in this and uh for a while it looked like sore was actually going to come back but denial just 
executed perfectly. Yeah, I want to highlight the I think the one point where we thought the game might I thought the game might turn and that was Met Yankee yeah. at that Gold Fury. We saw Denial constantly bait the first couple. They secured it, but I think it was that third one they were going for and Shadow Q just misses a pluck. He misses a pluck, goes right into the ultimate and Met Yankee, he plays this beautifully. He hits every auto, he hits the supernova right out of Sobek ult. And I mean, Met Yankee carried that fight basically. Three, kept four, in it. five, six, seven, every auto. eight. Eight autos in a row. He had a couple before that too. Not the easiest thing to do on Soul. No. Not at all. And his, he didn't have that much magic defense at that point in time either against the Agni and the Soul, which is very surprising. And they uh, did not have a 7,000 goal lead at that point in time, which they uh, we saw Sora pull it back down to like less than 1,000. But then it was all about how Hurwind was able to find that pick onto Snoopy around that Fire Giant fight. Yeah, and Hurwind really showed up. You know, oh, yeah. you know, I think Aggro highlighted it perfectly, kind of like that revenge, that chip on the shoulder that he's been seeking. You know, he was kicked off this Sora lineup in favor of Snoopy, and then just makes the, a beautiful play at the Fire Giant there. Denial win off of this one pick, honestly. They get the Fire Giant, they're able to get the Phoenixes, and then they keep baiting around this blue buff and speed buff area. Yeah, what do you what do you think it was that allowed Denial to, to, to really win? Was it just really calculated play, you know, individual performances from Homie and, oh, and Hurrowind, or what was it? I think it was a little bit of not allowing Anister to do Anister things in the late game. Every time he would come landing from his door ultimate, we saw Homie instantly net multi him. They, he he had to hammer away from the engagement, so he was pretty much a non-factor every time he landed in. And uh, you can see Hurwin there just cleaning up one of the last fights there. Get himself a little taunt onto the team that kicked him off. But Why that not? was just game one, though. Um, in the books, really intense here. What are uh, your expectations for game two, Fierno? I'm thinking uh, today, just based off that first game, this is where the group of death shows up. This is where there's going to be more splits, more surprise victories. Stuff like that, and I think game two is going to be interesting, and I'm expecting a split, but it could go either way. We'll, we'll see if Sora can pull it back, but don't worry.